In physics, the density of states is a fundamental concept essential for understanding electronic and optical systems, such as transistors and optical cavities. It tells us the number of available quantum states at a specific energy, helping to predict the behavior of electrons and photons within these systems. In a transistor, we focus on describing the density of states of electrons in the semiconductor, where the energy typically follows a parabolic relationship with the wave vector k. In a simple optical cavity, we are interested in the density of states for photons, which exhibit a linear dispersion with respect to k. The density of states can vary significantly depending on how the quantum state's energy depends on momentum or dispersion relation. To keep things general, let's consider a dispersion relation of the form as shown, where C is a constant and alpha is the exponent. For example, alpha equals 2 corresponds to parabolic dispersion, while alpha equals 1 corresponds to linear dispersion. The density of states also depends on the material's dimensionality, herein denoted by D. In this video, I will derive the general expression for the density of states, as shown here. We'll then apply this formula to well-known examples, including silicon, graphene, carbon nanotubes, and Dirac semimetals. Let's begin. Chapter 1. Discretization. Volume and area in D dimension. Consider dimensionality D equals to 1. Quantum states are not continuous in the wave vector space. For a system of length L, the spacing between allowed wave vector k is given by 2 pi divided by L. For dimensionality d equals to 2, the discretization occurs over an area in k space, with the spacing between allowed k points given by 2 pi divided by L squared. For dimensionality d equals to 3, the discretization occurs over an elemental volume in k space, herein given by 2 pi divided by L cubed. Combining these results, a simple rule starts to emerge, allowing us to express the discretization volume in k-space for any arbitrary dimensionality d. Here we use the term volume in a generalized sense to refer to the d-dimensional space. Let's consider our discussion in the k-space. For d equals 1, the volume encompassing all wave vectors up to k is simply the length 2 times k. For d equals 2, the volume encompassing all wave vectors up to k is the area of a circle with radius k. For d equals 3, the volume encompassing all wave vectors up to k is the actual volume of a sphere with radius k. Just as the term volume is used in a generalized sense to describe the d-dimensional space, we can similarly derive the surface area that encloses all wave vectors up to k by differentiating the volume with respect to k. Here, the surface refers to the boundary of the d-dimensional region in k-space. For d equals 1, the surface area is 2, referring to two boundary points. For d equals 2, the surface area is the circumference of the circle with radius k. For d equals 3, the surface area is the actual area of the sphere with radius k. In fact, the surface area of a d-dimensional sphere also known as the d-1 dimensional surface enclosing a d-dimensional volume, can be derived using the following well-known formula. Here, the gamma function is extended to handle non-integer values. For your convenience, we've listed the gamma function values for both integer and half-integer arguments. For integer arguments, the gamma function reduces to the factorial, while for half-integer arguments, it involves the square root of pi. Here, we've included some examples that will be useful for the calculations later on. Chapter 2. Deriving the density of states. Earlier, we derived the expression for the volume V sub D that encompasses all wave vectors up to K in a D-dimensional system. We also established that each quantum state occupies a discretization volume in K space, denoted by delta sub D. Therefore, the number of quantum states with a wave vector magnitude smaller than k is given by the v sub d divided by delta sub d. Dividing this by the system's physical volume gives us the number density, n sub d. 
The final expression for the number density is shown here. The number density, nd, represents the number of quantum states that encompasses all wave vectors up to k per unit volume. In contrast, the density of states provides the number of quantum states per unit volume per unit energy. To obtain the density of states, we take the derivative of the number density with respect to energy. As a result, the density of states depends on how the energy of quantum states disperses in K, where the constants C and alpha are specific to materials. By applying the chain rule, we can express the derivative of the number density with respect to energy as a product of derivatives in K. Both the derivatives of number density and energy with respect to K are straightforward to derive. We provide this intermediate result here for your reference if you wish to inspect the details. The general expression for the density of states can then be obtained, as shown here. We observe that the density of states depends on the dimensionality d, as well as the parameters alpha and c in the energy dispersion. Chapter 3. Actual Examples Let me restate the density of states expression we just derived. In solid-state materials, it's common practice to include a degeneracy factor, denoted here as G sub S, to account for spin or valley degeneracies. Let's consider a prototypical semiconductor like silicon, which has a parabolic energy dispersion, meaning alpha equals 2. Consider the 3D bulk and a degeneracy factor G equal to 2. We find that the density of states which scales as the square root of energy E, consistent with what you would find in many solid-state physics textbooks. Here, C is related to the electron density of states mass M as shown. For a 2D slab, the density of states is constant with respect to energy and depends only on the density of states mass. Finally, for a 1D nanowire, the density of states is inversely proportional to the square root of energy. In summary, we see how dimensionality significantly influences the density of states in a material. In general, as dimensionality increases, the density of states tends to be larger at higher energies, reflecting a trend towards a higher state density in materials with greater dimensionality. Finally, let's repeat this exercise to materials with linear energy dispersion. In one dimension, an example of a material with linear energy dispersion is a metallic carbon nanotube. In two dimensions, graphene exhibits a linear energy dispersion. For three dimensions, topological Dirac semimetals, such as cadmium arsenide, are examples of materials with linear dispersion. Using our formula, we find that the density of states behaves differently across dimensions. In 1D, it remains constant with respect to energy. In 2D, it increases linearly with energy. And in 3D, it grows quadratically with energy. To wrap up, let's briefly discuss how the density of states can be computed numerically. The density of states can be interpreted as the area of the ISO energy surface in K-space, divided by the discretization volume for each quantum state, and further divide by the physical volume. The area of the ISO energy surface in K-space can be expressed using the integral shown here. For numerical implementation, we can discretize K-space and approximate the Dirac delta function with a smooth Lorentzian function. Here, we apply this approach to parabolic bands in 1D, 2D, and 3D, for which we've already derived analytical density of states expressions. The comparison between the numerical and analytical results is displayed, showing excellent agreement. If you'd like a copy of the MATLAB code that performs this numerical calculation, feel free to request it by leaving a comment below. If you found this discussion helpful, you might also enjoy our videos on the evolution of electronic states, tracing the journey from hydrogen atoms to a one-dimensional crystal. Our channel also offers discussions on fundamental concepts in solid-state physics, as well as tutorials on modeling the electronic properties of graphene. Thank you for watching, and be sure to check out these resources to deepen your understanding.